Okay, so having talked about what P5.js and processing are, um, the next thing for us to do is to look at where we're actually going to be writing our code. And we're going to be doing that within the P5.js web editor. This is really great. This is a place where we can write code, run it, debug it, share it with other people all in one place. Um, you're going to want to go to editor.p5.js.org. And if you haven't yet, please bookmark this. We're going to be here a lot during this class. And um, you may notice one difference, which is I have my name and account info up here. You'll see a link that says login and sign up. Um, if you don't already have an account, go ahead and click the uh, sign up button. And if you want to just pause and do that right now um, and make an account, that's going to be great because it enables some of, of the features that you're going to see here that you won't have until you, um, until you make an account. So with that, we can go ahead. I have this handy dandy uh, drawing tool where I can draw right in the browser. And uh, let's take a little tour. So over here on the left where it says sketch.js, uh, this is where we're actually writing our code. You can see this template here that gets automatically created when you make a new sketch. And you'll hear me use the word sketch a lot um, in this class. Um, this dates back to the early days of processing where a program that you write is referred to as a sketch. And I really love this as someone who, for whom code is a really primary part of my creative practice. Um, I love that it points to code as a tool for drawing, for making, for creative, for making art. And um, that it's a material in the same way that clay or paint or ink might be. Um, so we refer to our programs as sketches um, and you'll see that in a number of places. This is where we write our code. Over here, we'll see in a moment in preview is where when we run our sketch, this shows up. Um, and then down here, this third part is the console. And this is common to any code editor. You'll see this. This is where error messages show up. Um, P5.js will do its best to try to tell you where the error is, what the error might be. It's not always perfect. You know, sometimes it's more helpful than others. Um, but you can also have your code um, print text there. So you can program that in. Um, and this is really helpful for debugging or just trying to understand what's happening in your program. It can be really hard to tell what's going on. And in fact, in the next video, we'll look at um, how to do just that. Then up here, we have some um, other commands for running our sketch. We'll show you, show you those in a second some menus and some other menus and settings over here. So um, we can run our sketch by clicking this play button over here. And you'll notice it pops up right now. It's just a gray square, not super exciting. We'll be changing that really soon. Um, you can stop it by doing the stop button. This auto refresh will allow you to make changes in your code and have them show up automatically in the preview over here. So you can see I'm changing the size of my drawing canvas. Um, you may or may not like this. It's not for me. I don't prefer that. But um, this would be is a great example where you should try things and find a workflow that works for you, things that help you write code better. Um, so I'm going to turn that off. And then this last funky text over here, this is uh, auto-generated as well. This is a file name. I'm going to go ahead and click the little pencil and change this. Um, and I can call it whatever I like. This will be the file name that'll show up for you. Please, please don't call it sketch one, sketch two, sketch three, sketch final, sketch final, dash final, dash really final. Um, it's not helpful for you. It's a bad habit. It makes it impossible to share it with other people. Get in the habit of using descriptive file names. It's really going to make your life so much easier. So I've renamed that. Um, then up in the file menu, there's not a ton of stuff here, but we can certainly save our sketch. And you'll notice um, it lists a keyboard shortcut. A lot of keyboard shortcuts are available in the editor. This is another thing to get used to. Um, it's going to save you a lot of time. So Command or Control S to save. And you'll notice that once I save it, I get some other options here. I can duplicate the sketch. I can share it. And in fact, this is going to be how you're going to turn in your homework on Canvas. Um, we can download it so you can have the code not saved in the editor, but saved on your computer. And a few other things here we'll come back to. Um, the edit menu doesn't have a lot, but this tidy code is very helpful. So this auto formats your code to be more readable. 
The sketch menu, we're not going to talk too much yet about adding files and folders. We will, uh, but you can see here the shortcuts for running and stopping a sketch, also super helpful. And then help. So this includes a bunch of keyboard shortcuts that you can use. Um, it also includes the reference, and this is so helpful. Please also bookmark this. You're going to use it a lot. This is where you can find information about almost all the commands within P5.js. Um, this is a great way of, you know, you're working on your homework and you're thinking, oh, Jeff showed us how to do this. I can't remember how, how this works. Um, how, to, how to make a Bezier curve. You click on this, it gives you um, a code example that's actually running in P5.js. Um, this one actually has two examples. Um, a description of what the command does. It gives you detailed syntax, so you can see all of the parameters and things that you um, change. And then very helpfully, it often will have additional commands that are related to the one you just found. And this is a really awesome rabbit hole to go down. There's no way that we can cover all of the commands in P5.js in this class. Um, so this is a really cool way for you to build your knowledge, to add new tools to what you're working on. Um, and you'll find, you can just kind of keep following that trail and, and learning a bunch of cool new things. So the example, or the, um, that's the reference is really great. And then the last thing under file is the examples. And these are um, code sketches that are created by members of the P5.js community. So um, there's a ton of them. It's really rad. And let's say, for example, you want to add sound to your sketch. We're going to do sound later in this class. Um, and here's a whole bunch of examples that you can try. They run right in your browser. You can duplicate and modify them. Again, a really cool way for you to learn and add new things um, to your work. Then up here under my account, this is where you can find all your sketches when you're logged in. Um, if you haven't created an account yet, you won't see this. Um, so you can see here some sketches that I've made. These are demos for this week, which is pretty cool. Um, there are also collections. You probably won't be using these yourself, maybe. Um, but this is how you're going to find the code examples for each week will be as a collection. So I can click on Drawing Basics. That's this week. A little description. And then these are all the demos that we're looking at this week. And you can view the code and, and run them and all of that stuff on your own. Duplicate them, whatever you want to do. Um, my account also includes some other stuff, some settings that you can change, um, you know, that kind of thing. And then... Um, if you click on the gear icon, this is the last thing in the editor. Um, this is where you can change settings for the editor. So you can change the font size to make it more readable. Um, it has different themes, which may or may not be what you want. Um, and then some accessibility settings. So we talked about how P5.js and processing as a project is um, a, an important value for them is having accessibility and inclusivity. And this is an example of that, where they're trying to build tools that everyone can use, um, including uh, visually impaired folks that might be using a screen reader, all kinds of stuff like that. So this is very cool. You can customize the editor to work uh, the way it works best for you. So that's the end of our tour. This is um, the P5.js editor. If you haven't yet, um, why don't you pause here, go to this page, sign up for an account, and open a blank sketch. And in the next video, we will um, actually finally be able to write some code together.